Yeah, we are going to switch in uh, uh, yes, uh, sections. So, so we are going to uh, discuss uh, how to find numerical or approximation solutions to first order nonlinear or the yeah, or the, or the differential equations. So, how do you? So, there are many methods. Yeah, you let's make them one of them. Yep. So, uh, Ankikuta. Yep. So, Ankikuta and multi step methods. Uh, these are the these are multi step methods. Yep. So, in this lecture, we will cover yep. So, Euler's method and Ankikuta method. Right. So, yeah, today we are going to yeah, we are going to focus on this one only. Yeah, next day, yeah, so I will cover this one with the error analysis of a Euler, Euler's method. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I think everybody learned uh, differential equations in your first year. Uh, this year as well, right? You are going, I think you are learning differential equations. Yep, so you, you have an idea about, yeah, so differential equations, right? So, so what is a differential equation? Can you, if I ask this question first, yeah, what is a differential equation? Yep, so without looking at this note, can you answer, yeah, can you answer this question? Yeah. What is a differential equation? Yep, so what is a differential equation? It is a function including these variables. Could have many independent variable. T is the independent. So here in this equation, in this function, yeah, f is a function, yeah. So this is the differential equation, f. Because it is an equation, yeah, this is equal to zero, yep. Right, so, yeah, differential equation is a function of, function of independent variables with dependent, uh, with uh, independent variables and dependent variables with its derivatives. First derivative, second derivative, third, and yeah, finitely many. Yep, so let's say n derivatives, right? So if someone asks, yep, uh, what is uh, what uh, what is a differential equation? The question, uh, yeah, this question, yeah, uh, you can say, yeah, it is a function. Function of independent variables, dependent variables with its derivative, its derivatives, right? Okay, so 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 if you look at yeah, so the uh, oh yeah, if you focus on this e uh, function, so it consists of only one yeah independent variable. T is the independent variable. Yeah, y depends on. T, yeah, so y is called dependent variable. So there is only one independent variable, there is only one dependent variable. That is not the case uh, in general, right? Uh, it could have many independent variables, t, uh, yeah, so let's say x, y, yeah, x, y, z, yeah, so like that, three-dimensional if you consider. Yeah, that's depend. Yeah, that depends on yeah, that depends on your practical problem you have. You are going to model. Yep. So the practical problem. So if you deal with if you play with the one dimensional road. Yeah. So this is a road. So you are going to find the conductivity of this iron road. Let's say you increase the temperature from from this end. So you want to measure the yeah conductivity of this iron rod. So so actually this is a one dimensional problem here. So for that, ah oh, not not one dimensional, two dimensional, because here we have two uh, two variables. One is the space. Space is one dimension. 
Another variable is time. Time is the another independent variable, t. So for this problem, you have two independent variables. And if you talk about the temperature of this iron rod, yeah, I will say, yeah, this is the temperature at any point, at any point and at any time. Yep, so, so temperature depends on the position of the iron rod as well as the time, right, time. Yep, so therefore, yeah, so, for this uh, model, uh, your differential equation consists of uh, two independent variables, x and t, uh, and one dependent variable. It could be many dependent variables, but for this uh, differential equation, yep. so you have only one dependent variable, right? And it's derivatives, uh, derivatives with respect to which variable, yeah, it could be x, yeah, it could be, yeah, so this is a function of, yeah, this is a differential equation, yeah, yeah maybe mix of x and t, or x, x, so, yep, so, there you have an idea, yep, so, actually, differential equation is a function, function of, mm, Dependent variables and uh, depend independent variables and dependent variables with its derivatives. Yep. Now you have an idea. Yep. Okay, so we know of what is a yeah, so what differential equation is. And where do they arise? Yes. They arise in many, yeah, many areas. In engineering, physics, I think most of you, yeah, uh, physics uh, subjects, uh, biology, uh, yeah, we don't have biology students. Yeah, physics, um, physics, biology, economics, yeah, economics I have, I uh, have some, uh, Yep, so in physics, I think, you know, if you, so this is the simple problem, yeah, if you consider this pendulum, yeah, you can write the equation for if you use more, but if, uh, if you give, use more, uh, yeah, perturbation, and this is oscillating. Now, so, so you can, so this is the general portion, then you can, yeah, right, which you can apply Newton's second law to obtain the, yeah, obtain. So this is the general portion, T is equal to T. Yeah, you can write the equations. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, theta. And this is uh, rotating with this angular velocity. Yeah, you can write, yeah, the equation. Uh, you can apply, how do you obtain equation? Yeah, you can apply Newton's second law, yeah, if equals MA, yeah, so. Yeah, so physics, yeah, you can obtain a uh, differential equation. Something, if you have a system, that system changes with time, yeah, so then you are able to obtain differential. If you have something, uh, some system that if you want to uh, if you want to investigate that system with the time with time and space yeah you can obtain differential equations right so any uh, yeah. so chemistry if you put some reaction to the solution reaction let's say reaction yeah, for this process, yeah, you can, yeah, model, yeah, so you can write the equations in biology, population dynamics, yeah. population is growing, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, growing, yeah, you can write the equation in medicine if you inject uh, COVID-19 vaccine to the body, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you can write uh, equations, dynamics, 
Ya ikan emek sen engineering yap so. Ben engineering yap. So there are many applications I don't remember yap so. Engineering. Yep, so in many, yeah, so you can find many applications. In physics, yeah, there are many applications, of course, we have done, yeah, physics courses. The Kepler's equation and three body system, moon, sun, earth, and moon, yeah, so you can uh, write, yeah, if you have two bodies, yeah, you can. So they are acting, and you can apply. Uh, you remember, this is mass one and one m two. So this force is equal to is uh, proportionally equal. No, uh, yep. So you can write if they are moving. Yeah, if uh, the system, this is not. Yeah, so if something is uh, changing with time, yeah, you can write. Yeah, if a ball is uh, if if a ball is torn, yeah, you can write the equations. Yep, so yep, so like that. Okay, uh, yeah, so you you know these things. Let's uh, brush up uh, your knowledge on these. Yep, differential equations. Uh, yep. So at the later, I think later in the next session, I think, so you have to uh, download the symbolic package, and then you can obtain analytical solution to a given differential equation. So how do you obtain analytical solution? And then using our numerical techniques. Uh, so I promise you, I promise uh, you to, uh, yeah, so I, I discussed this one today. So let's say if you, uh, yeah, if you consider one of our uh, equations, you using that package, symbolic package, you obtain analytical solutions. Then using this method, this numerical method, yeah, use, if you use this method, you obtain approximate solution or numerical solutions. So then using that, you obtain numerical solutions. Now you investigate, uh -huh. so what is the error between these two? This is the exact solution, and uh, this is the numerical solution, how close they are, like that. You, you do something like, you do some kind of investigation, right? Uh, between exact solution and solution, approximate solution. All right. So the next session is very important. So you have to learn how to install, how to download, yes, how to uh, set up that symbolic package. Yeah, you have to download from the internet and install on your PC. I install on your PC and you have to use that package to obtain the new uh, app, uh, exact solution of this differential equation, right? So, so in this part, I don't mention, I won't mention those, uh, the, uh, the, that part, right? I won't mention that part. I just uh, discuss this technique only. Yep, so you just make that only right. next session they will explain how to install that symbolic package on your PC. So how do you uh, use that package to obtain the analytical solution or exact solution of of first order yeah, of first order equation? You can obtain a solution, exact solution. To any order, but uh, so today we already discussed first order bodies. Right? Yep. So the solid, yeah, the solid line represents uh, the the actual solution, or we can call exact solution or 
analytical solutions, right? So this is the analytical solution to this differential equation. Let's say, yeah, first order differential equation, some first order, some first order differential equation. Yeah. So you know that it is a function, right? It is a function, yeah. So this is a, this is a first order y. It has only one, uh, yeah, first order two. So why is the dependent variable? Yeah? Why is the dependent variable? So x is the independent variable, right? Okay. So in this uh, section, uh, we will yeah use uh, Euler's method. So the next section, you will uh, use symbolic package. You will install symbol symbolic package to obtain this exact solution, right? All right. So. So in this section, yeah, so with my sec, yeah, so to, uh, now, now you are going to learn this method, then we obtain this uh, numerical solutions. Now we analyze the error, error, yeah, between exact and the numerical uh, solution, right? So how do we minimize this error? So, so what are the things we have to do? To minimize this error, right? We will discuss in this section. Right? Okay. Any questions? Yep. So I will. Yeah. Why do we need numerical methods to solve differential equation? Yeah. What is the answer? Yeah. So why do we? Why do we use numerical methods to obtain numeric approximate solution? Yeah. Can you tell me the answer? Yeah. Why? So here you are model. So you know that. So you can, uh, you can obtain. Yeah. So differential equation from many fields, right? So they are working on some practical problem, right? So they come up with a model, mathematical model. It uh, consists of uh, yeah, differential equations. Yeah, definitely you have differential equation if you model something, dengue transmission or COVID-19 transmission. Under, under a lot of assumptions, you can obtain a system, uh, yeah, uh, differential equations. Yeah, differential equations. Yeah, so, so to obtain solutions, analytical solutions or exact solutions, it's not possible all the time, right? always. It is not possible always. Sometimes it is very hard, very. We cannot, we cannot find solution, exact solutions to a differential equation, right? So if you have a differential equation like this, yeah, very easy to, very easy to obtain solution, very easy. But if you have e to the sign, yeah, sine y squared, something like this. Yeah, if you do research, if you model some practical problem, you get some weird models like this. Okay, those are nonlinear, highly nonlinear. So this is nonlinear. Yeah, nonlinear obtaining uh, exact solution or analytical solutions to a nonlinear differential equation is not that easy, right? It is hard. In that in that case, we go for go for numerical techniques. So yeah, so numerical techniques. If you go with your uh, numerical techniques, it is very important to investigate the error, analyze the error. Otherwise, we otherwise we uh, we cannot. Uh, yeah, don't even. And uh, that, and you you get some, or you always get some numerical solution. Uh, we don't know. So for this one, for this one, we don't know the exact solution. We cannot put the exact solution. So we don't any idea. We cannot visualize. We cannot compare this numerical solution with the exact solution because. Uh, we cannot obtain uh, 
exact solution to this differential equation. So in this case, uh, uh, you have to invest, uh, you have to analyze the error of this uh, numerical technique. Yeah, error analysis is very important when it comes to numer uh, yeah, numerical methods. Numerical. If you use some kind of numerical techniques, yeah, always uh, yeah, do error, uh, do error analysis. Yeah. yeah, that is very important. Right. Otherwise, we cannot believe we can believe this numerical solution. Yep. So we don't know. We get weird numerical solution. This is the exact so get weird solution. And so to get an idea, you better investigate the error of your method and analysis. Right. Got it. All right, yep, types of differential equations. Yep, so as I said before, you have ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. In ordinary differential equations, uh, you have only one, yeah, one independent variable or single independent variable. In partial, you have more than one, you have more than one. Independent variable, that's why, yeah, more than one, that's why x space and time. Then uh, these derivatives uh, are partial. Say so y x with respect to which variable? x variable. Yeah, with respect to t or mix of uh, uh, both variables. Or, yeah, or yeah, x, x, yeah, something like, yeah, so these are partial. Yeah, so that, that, that here you can, yeah, this may have yep, so many derivatives. Yep, so yeah, this is a differential equation. This is a for partial differential equation. And uh, this is, uh, uh, let's say it has only, because it's only, yeah, it has only one independent variable. And uh, yeah, and and one dependent variable here. It, it may have many dependent variables, right? It may have many, x space and time, and many dependent variables, y, w, these are dependent variables, and their derivatives, y, t, w, t, w, x, or something. So these are partial derivatives. Uh, this is uh, ordinary differential. Yeah, this has only only one independent variable with one or one or many independent uh, dependent y or w. Yeah, so, so these are dependent variables. These variables depend on t. Yeah. So y. This is yeah. So w t or Second derivative or that, that, that don't know. Yep, so right. First one is ordinary differential equations. Uh, yep, so this is a ordinary differential, this is a partial because uh, there are many dependent variables, more than one dependent variables. Do you know these things? Yeah, I'm just brushing up your knowledge on these things. Very easy, yep, so before using the technique, yeah, yep, so order of a differential equation, you know how to find the order. Order is the highest derivative of the unknown. Unknown is dependent variable, yeah, unknown. So these are, some people call these are unknown because, so, so yep, so at the beginning, we, we don't have any information about this dependent variable. So by solving this differential equation means you find y, y. So you know y, the behavior of y with respect to t. So then you can plot this y. Yeah. Solving this differential equation means, yep, so you find this y. Yep, so some people, or oh, sometimes it is called uh, unknown functions. 
Java is called unknown function. Yeah, so some or sometimes a dependent variable or unknown function. Okay. Yep, so appearing in the yep, so highest derivative of the unknown or dependent variable dependent variable uh, function. Yep, so it's a function of y of t. Yep, so so highest variable highest variable in this in this function. What is the highest uh, derivative of of the unknown? Yep, so variable for instance, yep, so here we go. Yep, so here, so this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a function here. Yeah? So very, uh, yeah, linear function. Yep, so generally you can denote like this. Yep, so generally, yeah, x, so you have one uh, dependent variable. And, yep, so, and, and you have only y prime, uh, y double prime. So this is a general function. Now this could be any linear, anything, any function. The orientation in this way or yeah, anything. So this is a general function. So this is a diff different second order differential equation. What is the highest uh, the highest order? Yeah, this is the yeah, highest derivative. Yeah, second. Yeah, this is the highest derivative of the unknown function. Yeah, this is a second node, yeah, second node, third node, and so on. And yeah, so how do you define the linearity of a differential equation? So linearity, if you want to check the linearity, definitely remember, in, so we were discussing, yeah, linear systems, linear systems. So linear systems, uh, so these are unknown variables, right, x2. We always check the exponent. Exponent should be equal to, should be equal to one if it is linear, yep, so, right, one and one. And we check another one, so, and we find, we check the coefficient in front of these uh, variables. So we have to check the coefficients. Uh, if, uh, so that, uh, must uh, depend on the deep independent variable. Yeah, so this is a linear third order linear by it is linear. Yeah, exponent is one. Yeah, exponent is one. Yep, so now we are checking the coefficients. Yeah, if you look at the coefficient, yeah, coefficient in front. Yeah, this is one. Yeah, that's good. Uh, what is the coefficient in front? Yeah, x, x is r. Ah, this is r. Ah, x is the dependent variable. Yep, so this is a product of, uh, this is dependent variable. Therefore, this is nonlinear. This is called nonlinear. Right. Yep, so important issue how the unknown appears in the equation. Linear involves. Uh, it was a dependent variable. It's derivative by itself. Yeah, yep, so yep. Yeah, these are yeah, lead exponent is one and coefficient uh, constant coefficients. Yep, so uh, this is the dependent variable, yep. So here. So you have x square, yeah, x square. T is the independent variable. Sometimes you may get confused uh, because uh, Yep, so yeah, so x is yeah, t is the independent variable, x is the dependent variable. Yeah, you have x squared, yeah, this is not linear, but this is linear because x is the independent, yeah, so linear. Yeah, so you understand this is not a linear product of yep, yeah, so dependent variable, product of dependent variable, and it's derivative. Yeah, this is not linear because of this term, yeah, this is okay. This is fine because it is independent variable. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, this term because of this term it becomes nonlinear. Yep. So you understand that, right? Yes. Very simple. Yep. yep. Any question? I receive. Yep. Okay. So, yep. So. Yeah, you can, as I said before, you can model uh, 
by using assumptions, you can develop models, mathematical models, right? So for this coffee uh, cup, uh, yeah, you can uh, write the equations uh, using Newton's, uh, yeah, uh, by applying Newton's law. Yep, so cooling, yeah, so law of cooling, yep, so you can write, obtain differential equation, right? So, right, so, yeah, it's a model of temperature of the object changes. Uh, this, uh, yep, so if you have something that change, that changes over time, yeah, you can obtain differential equation. That's the thing, yep. So because uh, this temperature of this liquid or coffee is changing because room temperature is low, this is uh, the temperature of this liquid or coffee is high because of this difference. Uh, the net, so yeah, so the yeah, heat, yeah, heat part, how do you say? Yep, so heat is, yeah, flowing from high to low. Yeah, so be, therefore, this uh, the temperature uh, of this liquid is reducing. Yep, so. The temperature is uh, object is denoted by this uh, temperature of the room. Yep. Uh, this, uh, yep, so the rate of, uh, let's say, the temperature of this uh, liquid, yeah, coffee at a general point, at a general, let's say, when T is equal to T. Yeah, let's, uh, we want to find, we want to investigate how the, how the temperature of this coffee, yeah, coffee, coffee, is, 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 behave, is behaving, right? We want to investigate that. So, so because of this difference, uh, this is a temperature high, this is temperature, room temperature is low. So, yeah, so in nature, uh, there's a, yeah, natural physics uh, behind this. Yep, so it's always uh, flowing from high to low. Yep, so then dissipating the heat of this temperature, uh, yeah, temperature of this liquid. Yep, so the the temperature of this li liquid is uh, uh, is let's denote the temperature of this liquid at a general time is T. So T is proportional to proportional to the difference between the initial initial yeah uh, temperature of this liquid. Let's say initial. Oh uh, no, not initial. The uh, difference between uh, the temperature of this liquid and the room temperature yeah, T minus. Yeah, the rate of uh, yeah rate of the rate of uh, rate of change of the temperature is proportional to time. It's proportional to the yeah, difference between room temperature and and the temperature of the liquid. Yeah, room. Yeah, so this one basically. Yep. So this one. So this is a first story like that. You can. Uh, yeah, obtain uh, yeah, mathematical models. Now, and this is the unknown function. Right, this is unknown function. Uh, let's let's see. This is linear. Uh, this is first order. What is the highest degree? Yeah, order is uh, one. Yeah, so because this is the highest derivative in this uh, equation, and uh, is it linear? Yeah, linear. Yeah, very. Easy to obtain uh, if you have linear first order equation, very easy to obtain. Yeah, so analytical solution yeah. solutions. Yeah, this is the analytical solution. So if you want to use your numerical uh, method, yeah, you can use for this differential equation. Then you can compare your numerical solutions with uh the analytical you can compare because you know the analytical solution right you can compare you can uh yeah you can do this uh, numerical technique called uh, Euler's method uh 
for this problem, then you can compare, uh, yeah, you can compare with the exact solution because this exact solution is known because this is very simple to obtain exact solution, right? So you can investigate, yeah, you can, you can do a small compa comparison, yeah, between numerical solution and the exact solution, right? Yep, so very easy to obtain this uh, exact solution, right? Of course, this first order linear, very easy. Yep, so here, this is another example. If you, yep, so if you uh, drop a ball, at, so at rest, yep, so from uh, the initial velocity, R, no, if you throw a ball, downwards uh, yep so then you can uh, use uh, you can apply Newton's second law to obtain this yeah initial velocity is given uh, yep so this is called so you know this information initial you know the initial velocity right so aha uh -huh, then you can write a uh, solution I uh, write the equation you can apply second order uh, Newton's second law to obtain this one. Yeah, so this is a, so you so this is unknown function, right? V is unknown, but uh, you know that unknown function at the beginning. So this is the uh, so initial velocity. You know that. So you know some information about that unknown function. Yeah, this is called the initial value problem, right? So you know some information about that unknown function at the beginning yeah so this system is called so this system the equation with this initial condition yeah this is called initial value problem first order the highest derivative is one this one first yeah first order linear yeah linear yep exponent is yep, linear first order linear initial value problem yeah, so, so this is first story equation linear and this is this system is called equation with the condition right is called initial value problem and uh, yeah so this is second order linear right linear and here you have you know two bound conditions so Yes, someone is asking so well, me. We had our lecture through the MST. Uh -huh. I use my uh, index now. Therefore, it was. Wow. Yeah, so email, email, yeah. Pumi, can you email? Uh, do me, yeah, she will have you, she will mark your uh, attendance, right? Yes, so this is a, a second order linear differential equation, but so, so here m is unknown, right? m is unknown, but you know this, uh, you know, you know, this unknown function at two points, yep, so two ends. So domain, uh, definitely domain x uh, varies between zero and l. So you know this unknown function at these two ends, two ends, left end and right end. So this system, the so equation with these two, with these two conditions, yeah, is called is called boundary value problem. So this is a boundary value problem. And this is a this is an initial value problem. This is an initial value. This is boundary. Because uh, you know this unknown function at boundaries, at boundaries, you know, yep. So this is called boundary value function. So problem, right? This is initial value problem. Yeah, if you don't specify this initial condition, let's say you know nothing about this unknown function, then what do you get? You get Solution with the arbitrary constant v. Yep. So some function of t. 
yeah d and and uh, the constant c so because of this arbitrary constant arbitrary constant is a real constant it could be any real value because of that you get a family of solutions like this family of solutions like this here if you don't specify the initial condition like this right you get a family of solution because of this up to constant a right see now when you simplify further you get this and then a is the arbitrary constant due to yeah due to this arbitrary constant a could be any real value you get a family of solutions okay if you specify if you somehow specify that arbitrary constant like this specify uh -huh. then you are able to find the c corresponding c then uh, then you get a solution curve if you specify the uh, uh the yeah condition if you specify this condition this is the first order linear equation yeah can obtain so when you obtain the solution you get family of solutions right but you specify the solution uh, so so you specify this condition yeah if you specify this condition we have to pick the solution that passes to this uh point this point here so out of these solutions, these solutions, out of these solution, you had to pick because you specify this condition here, right? Because of that, you had to uh, choose the correct uh, solution. The solution passes to that point, that point, that point. Yeah, this is the solution out of this family of solutions yeah so this is the solution if you didn't uh, if you didn't specify if you didn't specify the condition here condition if you didn't specify the condition yep you get uh, you have only this equation right and you get family family of solutions family of solutions got it yeah, so if you specify these conditions for unknown variable, right? Yeah, so then you can, yeah, you can choose the, then you have, you have only one solution, yeah, you have only one solution out of the family of solutions, family of solutions, because you already specified conditions these conditions got it yeah you get a lot of uh, system of first order equations nonlinear system of first order all these here. yes uh, these are simple yeah. so all right let me explain in general they yeah. are as so I mentioned before, generally real world. Yeah, so if you uh, if you model a real world problem, so uh, the analytical solutions to that uh, differential equation is not possible all the time. But so then we go with, yeah, we go for, we use numerical techniques or approaches or techniques or methods. So there are many methods. Uh, one of them, the easiest, easiest one is the Euler's method, or some people pronounce as Euler's method. Yep, so, right, Euler's method, right? Just the simplest, uh, uh, so obtaining numer uh, it's the simplest method to obtain numerical solutions for first order differential ordinary differential equations right so let's uh, discuss this 
Yep. So here you have the system. Which system? Yep. You know something about, so why is the unknown function or dependent variable? Yeah, you know some information about this unknown function. Yeah, so this is specified. Right? So this is called initial condition. Uh -huh. You have an initial value problem. Yeah, so this is, uh, so otherwise you cannot use a Euless method. Definitely you need an initial value problem. Definitely you need this information. Otherwise, you need at least uh, this information to obtain to obtain to obtain the numer uh, a numerical solution, right? So this is uh, yeah, you need this. Otherwise, you cannot obtain numerical solution. You need at least uh, initial condition to execute or follow or use this method. Otherwise, yeah, you can. If you have this one only, yeah, so you can use this method. Okay. So roughly, in other words, uh, we solve this initial value problem. Yeah. Okay, so initial value is given. Yes, let me draw y axis and x axis. This is x. X is the independent, dependent variable is y, right? Dependent variable is y. I uh, forget this part. This bit, y is the independent, dependent variable, right? Okay, so initial condition is given. Yes, so x naught, x naught is this. Aha, uh -huh, it is specified. It is specified. Yeah. Why not? This is why not. Okay, we start with this uh, condition, right? So that means, uh, yep, so this is the equation. Uh, yep, so this is the equation one y prime. So I should take on my board, writing board. I'm using the mops uh, divide on the screen. I think better. Yeah, let me. Yeah, let me take my board. Yeah, let me take my board. Let's see. Yep, so initial, yeah, so first order equation, yep, so, all right, first of all, yeah, you have to isolate, or you have to solve for y prime, so this is y prime, you have to isolate, so if you have a, have an equation like this, let's say, let's say, Now, this one. Yeah, first order, uh, this is linear initial value. <laughs> this is so this is a this is an initial value problem, right? So this is the initial value. <laughs> yeah, we can use sorry, sorry about it. <laughs> yeah. First job is you have to isolate this derivative. We are in this y prime. Yep, so I bring this term to other side. <clears throat> and 1.3 e. Oh, mm. Yeah, bring that term to other side, then that becomes negative to the y. Yeah, so this is your function of x and y. I will denote this one as a uh, uh, case of yes, x comma y. Yep, so that's why I, yep, so this is, yep, so this is the slope at any point. So you know the slope of, of, of your solution curve, family of solution curves. If you have this, Yep, so you know the function here, function is defined, right? It's known function. 
lower case f is not uh, next comma right yep so this is yeah this is slope function this is a slope of the family of solutions but here they specify the initial condition yep specify the initial condition then you you can start off with that slope yep they specify this condition yeah we know something about this unknown then if you plug this initial point into this then you know the initial yep so then you know the slope slope of of the corresponding corresponding solution at that point yeah so which is which is f of x naught y naught yeah so this is the slope at at x naught comma y naught yep so we start with that means you know the slope you know this direction okay it is not the slope is known yeah this is f slope is known yeah so which is f x naught comma y naught all right before that yeah before that i forgot to say you have to focus on the domain yeah so in so domain you have to discretize the domain let's say uh, i think they had mentioned the domain first hour oh, here we go so this is the domain yep right domain we are interested in right we are interested in this domain okay zero and three so x uh no three x varies between zero and three and and here they specify the initial condition uh -huh. so we know something about this unknown why is the unknown function r t t here t is the independent variable t is the independent variable dependent variable is y yeah <clears throat> yeah they specify yeah so we know this unknown function at this point yeah when x is equal t is equal to zero y is equal to one yeah this is one this is y let's say y this is y what is what okay it is specified uh-huh then if you if you know that point you have zero comma one you have zero comma one x naught is zero y naught is one yep so this is your function f of lowercase f of t comma y then you are able to find the slope at this point uh, to the solution uh, slope yep slope just uh, plug this one into here then slope is zero yep so slope is zero all right okay so okay before that we have discretized this domain yeah so zero three is our uh, is the interested interval yeah, no, uh, we are in, so is the in, uh, interval we are interested in right? so we split into small small sub sub intervals equal size sub intervals we split this interval into small small equal size sub intervals how many sub intervals do we have to split yeah that depends on your depends on your computer uh you have a low end or low memory so you can do uh, a lot of uh, calculations uh, otherwise uh, computational cost is high now if you have uh, upper end computer or supercomputer yeah, you can run you can uh yep yeah. so you can divide this interval into smaller smaller yeah sub intervals uh, yeah that depends on your capacity of your computer yep so let's uh let's uh divide n number of sub intervals right in general 
let's say some people want to divide this into or discretize this domain into n number of a number of sub windows n is n could be any number that right? you can choose uh values for n right so yeah let's uh let's denote now uh, in general yeah let's denote this is a and this is b right left hand and right hand yep so then then the so what is the length of length of length of each sub window if you yeah, discretize this domain into equal size sub intervals. So, what is the length of each sub interval? Yes, yes, anybody? Yeah, what is the length of each? So, first of all, you have to discretize your domain, you have to decide, uh, uh decide this interval a b, right? Then you discretize this uh, interval a b into small, small, equal size sub intervals. Yep, so n is the number of sub intervals uh, you include into this uh, interval, right? So this is the length of each sub interval, okay? So we know that uh, we have to, uh, so first of all, you have to isolate, isolate this uh, dy by dx uh, right hand side and put other terms to other side, then you can, you have this slope function. So this is the slope, right? So you can find the slope of your solution, fam family of solutions, right? So for this point, uh, you need, you have this X naught comma Y naught, that is the initial condition. Yeah, then you can find the slope, corresponding slope of your family of, yep, the corresponding solution, right? Yep, so then you can find this uh, approximation y1. Yep, so how do you find? Yep, so how do you find the rise is uh, y1 minus y0 divided by r, which is the slope, uh, yep, so slope approximate. If uh, h is very small, you can approximate, uh, you get better approximation. If this h, you can uh, you can approximate that slope very nicely if you reduce this h right so uh, that depends on that means if you reduce this h means the number of sub intervals will be increased right so you can decide that right i uh, will uh, talk about that uh, next week right so i think i think um not not chill i think if you reduce this h you get better approximation that's the thing yep so better approximation for y1 right y1 if you reduce this h okay yeah so using uh, this equation you can compute because i have terms um unknown. yeah every terms is known yeah why not and h uh, yeah user will decide this and then you know which yeah f of uh yeah slope of uh, at this point yeah so yep so this uh, if you want to improve if you want to yep so get a better approximation reduce this h yep, so, yeah. okay so then you can obtain y1 and you keep doing this yep so now uh is that uh, Well, oh, so this is, uh, yeah, so this is T1, and this is, uh, yeah, so this is Y1. Now, this is the approximation, and this is the uh, exact solution. And you can see the, the difference between these two, and this is the error, right? So if you reduce this uh, gap, uh, if you reduce this H, yeah, you can uh, get a better approximation to this, uh, yeah, so Y of T1, yes. Right, so we keep doing this. Uh, we select this point uh, with this error. We know that we have error, but what to do? So, so this is the simplest method. So we start, we do the same thing for this point, uh, which point T1 comma Y1. So Y1 is the approximated one to Y of T1, right? 
So this is T1, comma Y1. Yep, so again, we do the same because if you know the point, yep, so, yep, so you have, um, yep, so if you know the point, yeah, you have this. Yep, so if you plug into this, uh, this doesn't change, right? Uh, slope function doesn't change. Uh, you can define slope. Slope of the solution curves, family of solutions, right? Right? So, uh, so for any point in the space, two-dimensional space, yeah, you can obtain the corresponding slope to the to the solution corresponding. So here there's a fam there's a curve going uh, at this point. And if you select this, uh -huh, there's another curve, but these curves, yeah, do not cross each other because uh, yep, so do not cross. Yes, yep. So you can find um, slow slope. Okay, I uh, yep. So like that. So we start off with this, yep, then we get the approximation to this. That means you have, you get the approximation to this. This is this is what we want. This is the exact solution. This is what we want. This is what we want. This is the exact, but you get this, you get this error here, which error. All right. And we do that again. We keep doing that. We keep doing that. Get the approximate solution. Y one, y two, y three, y four, y y n. So, so let me run this code. Right. Yeah. So what is the order? Order. Yeah. A B. What is as well? This slide type, yeah, maybe so. Yep, a b, yep, so three zero three. I think, yeah, over using here we go. Here we, yeah, yeah, so that's that zero three. Oh, yes, I remember, yeah, zero three. Ah, here we go, yes, zero three, yeah, zero three, zero. To the uh, which one? Which one? Why not? Why not this one? Yeah, why not? So this is why not. This is x not. X not is zero. Why not this one? Now that is zero comma one is the coordinate. So is the coordinate now? Why not this? So we need only why not value. What else? Why not a number of iterations? Uh, let's. Put here how many iterations? I don't know. Yeah, so that depends on. Yeah, two, one, two, three. Okay, three. Let's run. Yep. So three, uh, three sub windows. Okay. Yeah. So we can go. Yeah. This is the. Yeah, these are, the, yep, so, yep, so we discretize 0, 3 into in 3 sub windows, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. And these are the, what is this? Uh, same thing, okay. Yep, so, yeah, this these are the uh, approximation too. Yep, so yeah, these are the approximation. Yeah, these are the approximation to exact. Uh, you, uh, if you know the exact solution, you can plot together. Yeah, you can plot together. So in this document, no. Yep. So yeah, let's increase the number of number of uh, iterations. If you increase to not iterations, sub intervals. Yeah, let's uh, break a zero three interval into three equal size sub intervals. Let's split zero three into equal size sub intervals. So these are the proximal. These are x not x uh, yeah x not x one x two da 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 x n. Yeah x ten. This is x ten. 
This is corresponding y not y one y two, and we have the graph graph. Yeah, much better. Yep. So if you increase the number of sub intervals, that means you decrease the you decrease the step size. When you increase n, you decrease step size. Then you get better approximation for what. Y i in general you can put y i. This is i minus one. This is i minus one. Minus one. I minus one. Like in general, like this. Yeah, i plus one. If you use i plus one, is i. Okay. Now, your i. Goes from zero to one to and so on. Yep. So let's increase. Uh, let's put hundred. Hundred. Yep. We split into hundred sub. Uh, yeah. Split zero three into hundred sub intervals. Okay. Because we are using com. Yeah. We use computer. Don't need to compute. Yeah. So. This is x, x hundred, and this is y, yeah, y hundred approximation. We ask the graph, yeah, much smooth, uh, much better. I think this is, uh, if you plot this one with your exact solution, yeah, very easy to obtain the exact solution to this example, this one, yeah, this is a linear equation, very easy. First order linear, obtain the what, which one is the exact, exact thing in this document. The exact, what's the exact, oh, this is the exact. You can find A using this initial condition, then, then you know the exact solution to that uh, initial value problem. So I think, so to that initial value problem. Yep, so if you plot both exact and numerical, you don't see any difference when you increase the number of uh, sub intervals. But, but for this one, you will see the difference. Yeah. Well, this is very bad. So plot this one with the exact solution. You will see the difference. So, I think they didn't plot, I think. Yeah, maybe, yep, so this, I think this, yeah, so here they decrease the number, uh, step size. That means you increase the number of sub intervals. When you increase the number of sub intervals, yep, so, this uh, converges to this solution curves. Yeah, I approach, I approach uh, the exact solution. Ah, uh, here we go here. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, step size is one. We, you reduce the step size. And this is the exact value, exact solution, numeric exact value, exact solution, right? We get the difference between these. Ah, uh, yeah, small difference, small difference, small difference. Yep. Yeah. What is H? H is the step size of the sub interval. As I said earlier, H is this. This, yeah, step size. Of this, the length of the sub interval, we split the original interval C A B into small small equal size sub interval. Right, H is the yeah steps uh, length of the sub interval. Got it? Start. <clears throat> Yeah, people call this H or yeah, 
H. Yeah, wisdom people. Yeah. H. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. So right. So, I think. <clears throat> Yeah, first of all, yeah, yeah. So you have to yeah, understand how to write. So how to code this? Uh, yeah. So this is a. Uh, uh, yeah. So this is a iterative process. Uh, yep. So starting from some point, then first of all you have to split and uh, the original interval into. Uh, equal size sub interval. Yeah, you can uh, use a for loop for that. Yeah. No, you can. Yep. So discretize your domain using colon mark right in octave, and and then you have to compute. Yeah, if you have this point, yeah, you can compute this using this. Yeah, compute other. Yep. So yeah, definitely for this one, you can use a for loop. From this, yeah, compute the next. From this, compute the next. Yeah, definitely you can use a for loop. So how do you call? How do you call this inverse uh, method? So the next session. Ah, uh, before that, uh, yeah. So you will learn how to install that symbolic package on on your PC. Uh, that so using that symbolic package. You can find you can plot the you can plot the exact solution for this one. I think uh, this one is very easy to obtain solutions. This is a first order linear, very simple to obtain. Yeah, uh, you don't do it by hand, right? You don't obtain solutions, exact solutions by hand in your exam. Yep, so. You'll be asked, uh, yep, so uh, using symbolic package, find the exact solution to this uh, differential equation. Then you had to use the symbolic package to obtain the exact solution. Then, uh, then write the uh, code, this Euler's method, to obtain the numerical solution. Then you can compare by graphing or together Graphing both together, we have the graph. Uh, yeah, so we have the graph. graphing both together. That's the graph. Graph. Yep. Yep. So, uh, what is this? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Graphing both together. So this is the numerical. So here you have how many sub into one, two, three equal size. Here zero one is one of uh, sub intervals. One two is another sub interval. Two three, and uh, yeah, octave join yeah these. Octave just join this these points, right? Don't consider these lines. Uh, yep. So they. Uh, the octave program joins uh, these points, right? Yes. So you have this, this dot, this dot, this dot, and this. So this is the initial dot, right? And you have the exact solution, exact solution. So you can compare both uh, exact and the numerical, these dots, numerical solution. When you decrease this length, length of the sub interval, you will realize that, you will realize that, yeah, you will realize that uh, the error between the exact and the numerical, here yeah, they join these dots. The octave, octave join, joins, uh, yeah, joins uh, all 30 points. I think we have 31 points here. We have third sub intervals between zero and three. We have so octave join all points. So basically, we, uh, normally we get points zero, right? So I the octave join all points. 
right and uh, you can plot the exact solution with this you can see yeah uh, so this uh, approximate when you reduce the yeah length of the sub interval we get good approximations to the exact one so this is the thing i want to mention today's in today's class uh, uh first of all you have to uh Install, yeah. So how to yeah set up the which one symbolic pack? How do you use symbolic? Pack? First of all, you have to install that package in your PC, and then you have to use you have to call that package. How do you do that? Uh, then using that package, how do you obtain the exact solution to this? Then you have exact you have you have the exact solution. Then using uh, this uh, uh, techniques, very small uh, uh, code algorithm, you produce numerical solutions, numerical solution, then you can compare both numerical with numerical with exact. Then you can measure, you can measure the error. Yeah, you can measure the error between numerical summation and the exact solution, right? If you have the exact solution here. So, yeah. You will, uh, so on. Yes. Yes. You will, uh, come on, yeah. Zero is starting point. Three is the ending point. Ten is the number of iteration. 10 is the number of, not iteration, number of sub-intervals. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can call it iterations. Yeah. So we split the original into 0, comma, yeah, 0, 3 into all into, yeah, into 10, 10 sub-intervals, right? Yeah, you can say, yeah, iterations, yeah. Yeah, number of iteration, and what is 1? Uh, 1 is the initial, why not, why not? Yeah, if you look at the code, why not, right? The hit, so why is the unknown function, right? Why is the unknown function? Anyway, I, yep, so I, why is that? So without that initial condition, you cannot execute, you cannot execute your work here. So you need this information to start of the work, right? This slope. So if you have this two coordinate, then you know the slope. You can plug uh, this one into the slope function. Then you know the corresponding slope. Yeah. Slope of the solution curve, the corresponding solution curve. Then you know H Then you can find Y1. Then you do the same to get Y2. Y3, right? Can you upload the code? Yeah, yeah, so I can give you this code. Can give you this code. Yeah, I will upload this code from web server. But you have to understand how do you write in the exam web. So very simple code here. You have to define function H and initialize uh, the Y array. This is Y array, uh, zero, yep, so then, yep, so uh, I think they will, they will explain this uh, with the symbolic one, yep, so I will, yep, so this is the code, yeah, I will upload to LMS, yes, uh, uh, this is what I want to mention. Uh, next week, we will discuss the error, error of this method with the Rangikuta method, right? Error of this method. So where's the Rangikuta? Yeah, so, where's the Rangikuta? Yeah, so next week, yeah, we will discuss both uh, analysis and Rangikuta method. Rangikuta is another Yep, so people use, uh, most people in the world use uh, 
Oh, di ya so rangi kuda foto de classical rangi kuda method to approximate the solution to the first order differential equation. Yeah, differential equation. Yeah. Okay, so this part will be discussed. Uh, yeah, next week. Yeah, so so now. Uh, yep, so definitely play with this uh, yeah, code and play with this code and try to increase number of uh, sub intervals if you increase sub intervals and try to uh, yeah, compare both exact solution with the numerical solutions, right? Uh, by changing the number of uh, yeah, yeah, number of sub intervals and is n represents number of sub intervals yeah number of sub when you increase number of sub, yeah you can reduce the number of steps no h h h yep so this is simple yeah pause stop